guys welcome back to the channel no we're not working on the adventure bike today uh i came across another uh victron component victron energy component deal uh it's the color control gx got this on an ebay auction wasn't really an auction because nobody else bid against me 300 bucks uh shipped so i thought that was a pretty good deal so I've started gathering up little components that I need to get this installed it's basically gonna connect to the inverter charger and the solar MPPT solar charger controller um, and just provide a little uh, data readout and remote and all that good stuff not sure what combination of cables and wires and stuff I'm going to run However, I'm going to make a combiner cable and put it all inside a uh, flex sleeve, like that, like that up there, kind of like that. Uh, conduit sleeve, wire loom, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we're going to get this bad boy installed. I think this will mount on the wall somewhere, obviously. Not sure where. Haven't read the instructions yet. Not gonna bore you to death with all the wiring and whatnot. I'm just gonna kinda show you the end result. However, let's go out to the shelter and see what I get to deal with today for fun. Cause I always love running cables and wires in the shelter. So this should add to my day. So that noise that you hear is the uh, Eberspotcher Hydronic. If you're new to this series or you just got an LMTV and you wanna do a build out that's very bare bones and utilitarian, this would probably be your best bet. <laughs> I really don't do anything that looks super perfect. Um, it just basically has its function and purpose. And uh, then we kind of go from there. Anyhow, let's get back to what the task is at hand. So the old solar setup I had was kind of mounted here. Um, I guess it was okay. Wasn't the perfect spot. Since I sleep on this side of the bed, I was thinking that it'd be nice to have that little remote here. Maybe it has like a clock on it or whatever the case may be. And uh, I think you can wire it with power anywhere between eight and 70 volts, if I remember right. So I've got a spare circuit here on the 24 volt side circuit breaker. I think I'll run one out of there, and then I think we'll go behind the uh, the Confort Total, Confort Total, uh, high end, just just a high end piece of equipment, uh, mini split, and we're gonna tie in a cable to this unit and to this unit. I don't know what cables they need yet. I haven't opened this up or read the instructions or anything. And I think we're going to go into a uh, good old moldy corner over here. Get a lot of moisture in that area, so it's fun to get in there. And then uh, we'll run around and uh, come down here and have the, have the box mounted right, right there, I think. It'll be great. Um, yeah, I'm going to come back and show you the result. I'm not going to uh, bore you to death with this wiring. Although it is getting nice and comfortable in here because of the hydronic floor heating system by the way if you've been watching this build series this is fantastic um, you would have to go back in the playlist to see every single component or upgrade that I've done to this but basically what it is is it's an Eberspotcher hydronic 5k unit out of a sprinter van that nobody could figure out how to get to work because it, you basically had to have the Sprinter Van ECU uh, to get the Everspotcher to start. Well, I found a workaround for that. If you go back in my playlist, you could see where I reverse engineered uh, and bought a different controller for it. Uh, and at the time, was a really uh, budget-friendly build for uh, anyone. And this unit has been working flawlessly for three years that we've had it set up. Uh, this is kind of a new setup and um, it's great. You get hydronic heat going through a air heater 
and the floor heat so it's it's a two manifold or a two port manifold fantastic setup if you guys are thinking about building out one of these communication shelters put heated floors in it it just makes no sense whatsoever unless you do that a couple of benefits of the heated floors you step down and your feet aren't cold you don't have to put rags all over the floor to keep your feet warm um, it provides heat in the shelter and it's quiet um, if you're in an area where it's really really cold you can turn the, the forced air heater on and that will heat the air up in the shelter although for the most part we haven't had to use that we just let the floor heat um, keep the shelter at the temperature it's supposed to be. It's tied into a little $10 Lux thermostat, which sends the signal to the Ebers Botcher to either turn on or turn off. Uh, as another benefit, this coolant loop runs through a 20 plate heat exchanger, which is about that thick, by that wide, by 12 inches, uh, I think it's 10 or 12 inches in width total. So it's 3 by 3 by 10 or 12 3 by 3 by 10 so about the size of a brick infinite hot water so if you want to take hot showers outside in the snow or you want to take showers in here uh, you'll have infinite hot water there's no five gallon tank to maintain you don't have to deal with that any of that stuff this is basic bare bones easy um, quick down dirty works the way it's supposed to anyhow enough on that I'm gonna get the uh, whatever the hell it is that we're working on today mounted and wires ran and all that good stuff and show you the screen on it and then give you the outro it's gonna be great well this is about as fun as popping a blister Got the uh, remote box mounted and I've got power ran to it I decided to come out of the light switch uh, for power uh, this thing uses like milli volts so um, it's not taking up very much amperage we've got a cat5 cable coming out of the inverter and a VE direct cable coming out of the solar charge controller and now I get the joy of routing those up through and then over the bed and into the box here I tell you there's nothing more fun than lowering the bed down and just running some uh, cat5 and V direct cables uh, behind the television and up and over the mini split that just it really makes my weekend when I get to do stuff like that you know I don't know where I'd be if it weren't for this truck. Constant upkeep, maintenance, and improvements. Anyhow, uh, that's me complaining. What I'm complaining about, I have no idea. I actually feel very grateful to have this truck because uh, this truck has brought us tons of joy. Anyhow, um, I've got all the cables, the power, uh, V Direct, and a Cat5 into the junction box there to put the panel in. I've still got to do a termination here, close that up, and uh, get the bed back up and close up the inverter. And I think we'll be rocking and rolling. So I ran all the cables into the back of it, like so. And it immediately turned on and uh, started displaying what's happening. So that's pretty neat. Looks like we've got our battery bank on there with our solar. And it shows that the uh, inverter is off. However, let's turn that on and see if we can make that change. So I just turned it on. I don't know if that takes a while 
or if I even have it pl plugged into the right port on the back. Oh, there it goes. Wow, that's neat. Okay, I'm gonna come back, get everything closed up here, now that I know that everything is working, and uh, I'll plug the fridge in and see if we can get this thing to show information. So I just plugged the fridge in, and the compressor kicked on, and it looks like it's pumping out 49 watts. And we've got 190 watts coming in from solar. This is cool. Uh, it shows what's going into the batteries and, oh, that's neat. I'm gonna have to read the manual on how to get this thing set up and all that fun stuff, but yeah. That little screen shows a readout too, so looks like it is, uh, what is it doing? It's absorbing into the batteries right now from the solar, so. Yeah, pretty sweet. Nice little readout screen there. I'll have to read on how to get that uh, set up and automatic screen turn off and all that fun stuff. So, But I think that's probably going to be it for this video, guys. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. As always, you're going to want to stay tuned. The motorcycle builds are going to continue, and I've always got something up my sleeve for the next improvement in ABLE, the LMTV. But other than that, I hope you guys are staying safe, taking care of each other, and as always, I will catch you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.